So every year the question comes up in class, sir, how can low dose atropine actually decrease heart rate? Well, let's, let's see how that can happen. First, we have a cholinergic nerve here. Okay, cholinergic. And it's innervating the SA node, right, the pacemaker of the heart. Now, for simplicity's sake, let's isolate a presynaptic M2 receptor and a postsynaptic M2 receptor. So presynaptic, postsynaptic. Okay. Now, when we give a drug in low dose, typically it will bind presynaptically. So let's look at our atropine. We give it in a low dose, and it comes down. And typically, low dose will bind presynaptically. So now we have a binding of the presynaptic M2 receptor right here with the atropine. And we have not bound the postsynaptic M2 receptor because it's a low dose. So think about what's happening. We know that this M2 receptor is a GI protein. So atropine is an anti-muscarinic, and it is binding a presynaptic M2 receptor on a cholinergic nerve that is innervating the SA node. So now we are inhibiting a GI protein on a nerve that releases acetylcholine. What you must also remember is that when you stimulate the muscarinic 2 receptor, it is going to decrease the amount of acetylcholine that is released by this cholinergic nerve. So what have we just done? We have inhibited, inhibited that inhibitory function of the muscarinic 2 receptor on this cholinergic nerve. So what does that mean? Now we get more acetylcholine that leaves because of this presynaptic blockade. All right. Now we have more acetylcholine in the junction and now that will bind to the SA node, the M2 receptor in the SA node. And here, again, it is still a GI protein. Okay? So now we are, it, we are stimulating this postsynaptic GI protein. And as you know, we are going to either decrease calcium entry increase potassium efflux, or decrease the amount of cyclic AMP into this SA node. All of those combined will cause a decrease in heart rate. I hope this helps.